Build your own board of directors. Think about these people who you don't report to, but they are in these conversations and these meetings, and they're senior business leaders who can also advocate for you. I was not in the room when our exec team was sort of discussing who would be right for this GM of Credit Karma Money role. And one of them, who I happen to, to sort of meet on a regular basis, said, Hey, Paul and me can totally do it. And I don't know that if I hadn't had that connection that I would have been considered for it. Not because I don't deserve it, but just because other people might not have known I was interested. Well, Paula, me, thank you for joining us. Um, I'm excited to have you here today just because I feel like I used to see Credit Karma commercials on TV every once in a while. It was always focused on the, you know, checking your credit score product. And now all of a sudden there's bank accounts, there's debit cards, there's all these different things. And I feel like I see you guys on TV all the time, especially during the Olympics and stuff as well. So talk to me a little bit about how you guys have expanded your offerings recently. And, you know, you're trying to differentiate yourself in a, a rather competitive space at this point. Yeah, I mean, really good question. I mean, we're known um, for credit score and credit coaching and sort of financial progress. And about two and a half years ago, we decided, hey, it's not just enough for us to be able to help you with sort of the left side of your balance sheets, what you borrowed, how you're managing that debt and so on, but also on the other side, your income, your spending, your goals, what you're saving for. And so we introduced uh, Credit Karma Money, which is uh, my product line, uh, starting with a, a high yield savings account. Uh, and recently in April, we made a checking product generally available. And, you know, uh, the idea is, can we combine those two, give you insights about, hey, this bill is due, can you pay it off? Do you want to pay a little bit more off on your um, on your credit card debt and, you know, improve your score? Uh, so sort of tying both those worlds together and starting the journey to autonomous finance. And, you know, what you're seeing in terms of sort of the, the advertising we're doing is really twofold, right? One is letting the world know that Credit Karma has these offerings, right? It's very not, it's very sort of, um, uh, not very, but sort of orthogonal a little bit, a new space for us. And so we just want to sort of educate people that's there. But more importantly, we're trying to reach a younger Gen Z audience. And we realize sort of traditional TV and media may not be the best place um, to reach them, right? And so we're experimenting with TikTok and, and eSports and, uh, you know, NBA sponsorships and a bunch of other things where we think we'll have, we'll have uh, the ability to sort of rise above the noise and really explain the value propositions that we have around credit card money. You know, I'm trying to picture having Ken, uh, your founder who has also been on the podcast before, in these meetings talking about using TikTok to promote your product. And I'm just like <laughs> wondering how exactly that's going. <laughs> well, you know, the, the way we're doing it is we're using uh, what we call sort of credible influencers, right? So the MR Chamberlains of the world, the Zach Kings of the world, uh, who can connect with that audience and are really authentic, right? Um, and I wouldn't rule, rule uh, um, Ken out. He's like an avid TikTok fan right now. He's, you know, on it, just trying to understand kind of the algorithm and what's happening behind it as well. That's too funny. Yeah, he does have a, a fun side. My last encounter with him in person was going uh, boxing at Rumble at six in the morning. So oh, he, perfect. He does like to do random things and have a good time too. I just like TikTok. <laughs> I, I never <laughs> would have imagined that part of it. Um, but speaking of this audience that, you know, Gen Zs that are using some of these platforms more, something else that you guys are doing that is part of a new wave that's sort of taken off a little bit recently is this sort of like gamification thing where if you're using the debit card for Credit Karma, you might end up, you know, swiping it and then getting whatever you bought for free. Yes. Um, talk to me a little bit about that strategy because you are one of the first that I've seen do that. I've seen other similar type things where they, they gamify offerings in regards to debit and checking, um, but this is, this is definitely one of the first in this area. Yeah, so so really great point. I say I I'd say our uh, goal with Credit Karma Money really is to change a consumer's relationship with money in a way that puts them on the path to sort of spending wisely, uh, saving for the future, and ultimately building wealth. Um, and for that, that first step, which is how do we get you to um, sort of take something that's a um, that's a gamification, but 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 nudge you in the right way with the right uh, financial action. So what this is, uh, is a feature called Instant Karma. And it basically is every time you swipe your debit card, you could be randomly refunded that entire purchase. It's really simple to explain. Um, and really sort of um, adding that, that sort of nudge, which says, hey, when you use your debit card, you're actually using the money that you have. You're not racking up any additional debt, right? So that's the good financial habit we want to we wanna, uh, 
uh, recommend. And then, you know, in, in speaking with our members, they said this was the number one thing that was missing. Generally, debit cards, particularly for younger consumers, those just starting out, not having minimum balances, don't have rewards associated with them, right? So this was our way of sort of um, uh, you know, making it more equal, right? So anybody who uses a money account obviously doesn't get charged any fees from us, uh, but also has this sort of nice way of, of sort of helping them on the path to financial progress. Do you have any data points around how that's going? And remind me, when did you guys officially launch that as well? Was it in 2021 or was this a late 2020 thing? Yeah, so we um, were, are generally available since April of 2021. Uh, we did what was called kind of a limited release, you know, invite only kind of beta starting October of 2020, just so that we could ramp up the product, get early feedback, tweak the things that we wanted to, and then just make it available to our 110 million uh, member population, right? So this allowed us to really understand what are the value props you want to like double down on. So we learned that, hey, people want you know access to their money as soon as they can get it right so we have things like two day early access to your paycheck you know people wanted rewards and that's where we really introduced you know instant karma uh, and then obviously you know we know consumers pay um you know, north of sort of 35 billion in in banking fees and so that was one of the other things which credit com as you know is is uh, you know we don't charge our consumers for anything so this was a, this was another big sort of pillar that we wanted to build out and just getting all of that built together now, you probably won't give me an exact number of how many people have signed up for this, but given that you have 110 million users, have you been happy with the uptick for this product and the, the engagement that you've seen? And has it, did, did all the commercials, the TikToks and everything, has yeah. that done what you expected it to? Yeah, good question. So I'm super thrilled with kind of the adoption and the feedback that we've gotten on, on the product, particularly on, on the features that I just laid out. Um, and we're seeing, uh, we won't share the numbers, but we're seeing that real sort of great rise in uh, awareness and consideration from these newer segments and these newer audiences. So, so really, sort of happy with just how how well we are sort of you know exposing and introducing this this product line uh, to our member base and also you know activating sort of newer members. Yeah, that that was going to be my next question. You know, you have all these members that have used you for so long for things like credit monitoring, right? Um, and some of your other products like auto, mortgage, all right. that stuff, personal loans. Uh, but has this product brought in new people to the platform as well? Yeah, and, and um, you know, this is there's two sources for this. So I would say definitely younger audiences, right? Um, getting them. We're uh, in the millennial audience. We're you know one out of every two millennials already. So pre we're pretty well penetrated. We don't have that level of sort of loyalty and and penetration in the Gen Z audience. So we're definitely seeing that uptick with this with this consumer. If you think about you know if you're 18, 20, 19, 20, 21. You're really not worried about a car or a home or any of those things yet, right? But you're very much, you know, interested in having a checking account and, and you know, worrying about your savings and, you know, uh, saving for something in the future that you want, whether it's that Xbox or, um, or, or you know, your, your um, uh, sort of day-to-day -day expenses. So I think uh, definitely seeing that. Um, and then from the other pieces, our relationship uh, and partnership with Intuit, right? So this past tax season, we allowed anybody who had filed a... TurboTax uh, um, uh, tax return to deposit that refund into a credit card money account. Um, so that's um, that's another place where we're seeing sort of lots of um, repeat users as well as sort of new users coming in. Something else that uh, this generation, both millennials and Gen Z, has been fascinated with lately is not only you know trading and brokerage services, but crypto, NFTs, like all these other things, artwork and alternative investments. How do you guys think about that? Because they're obviously like you're a huge company. You have tons of members. Yeah. There's so much you can do. But you, that, that makes it so you really have to prioritize what will and will not work for you and, um, you know, a timeline for getting things out. Yeah, and that's, you know, again, you know, never say never, right? But I think we're very much focused on, um, you know, getting um, adoption in these two products that we talked about, which is the checking and savings products, um, because that's the start, right? And then, you know, as you move away from living paycheck to paycheck and start building that rainy day fund and start having a little bit more sort of goal-oriented savings, then we'll look at what are the opportunities for you to grow that and, you know, build wealth. And, and that's where, you know, uh, we'll look at all of those, those sort of wealth creation options. You know, it feels like it's just hard to decide which things are fad, which things aren't fads. <laughs> right. and, you know, it feels like 
there's some things that just happen so quickly. Like SPACs were such a big thing for a long time, and now right. they're not really doing that much anymore. Now NFTs are this really big. I can't <laughs> even keep up anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, finance is a is a rich and interesting space right now. Um, and uh, I think, look, I think our, our note sure. is, you know, we're our mission is not about just sort of launching these financial products, right? It's very much about how do we help our members navigate that with all the things that's available in the ecosystem. So how do we make the ecosystem better for you? How do we give you the right recommendations? How do we help you automate your life around finances? How do we take some of that anxiety out? That's what we're focused on. Yeah, and you mentioned all the, the we talked about the gamification aspects as well. Right. How do you add things like that into the platform in terms of, you know, and Ken and I have talked before about financial education and, yeah. and stuff. And like, you can't just publish a bunch of blog posts because people aren't going to go read a bunch <laughs> of blog posts. What you have to do is like have these nudges and tips and things that doesn't feel like it's like this long, boring educational thing. It's something that you don't even really notice as much that it's educational. How do you think about building that into these new products as well? Yeah, I mean, I think, look, the Credit um you know, ethos is very much about we try to personalize it, right? So we'll you trust us with with the information you have that you know that we're we're pulling on your behalf and giving it to you. We contextualize it with our recommendations, uh, and then we personalize the action. We try to make it so that it's not like here's all the things you need to do to you know be a millionaire. Right? We're very much about like let's take that first step with you. So it doesn't matter that you don't have four hundred dollars in emergency savings, but just put ten dollars away from every paycheck. And guess what? By the time you automate that at the end of the year, you'll have that four hundred dollars in emergency savings. So we're very much about let's just help you take that first step on this journey. And we really contextualize it based on kind of your own data, right? You mentioned Intuit as well, and you guys got acquired by them late last year. Yeah. Um, how, how does that impact product rollout? And how should people expect things to change in terms of both the pace um, as well as what you're focused on, given that uh, that change? Yeah, I would say at the high level, right? Um, not a whole lot of difference from how Credit Karma used to operate. Ken now has a boss. His name is in the Intuit CEO, Sasan, but everybody else is kind of the same, <laughs> right? Um, I think what we'd say is we have more resources. We have more data. Uh, we have more um, opportunities like TurboTax and QuickBooks Payroll where we can have integrated offerings, right? Otherwise, not a lot has changed, I would say. We continue to operate independently from Intuit. Well, another thing I want to touch on, and this is switching gears a little bit, is that you are a female minority that has done very well climbing the corporate ladder <laughs> um, in an area where I, fintech has been better than some areas in terms of you know gender diversity and, and inclusion, but there's still so much work to be done. So I guess just talk to me a little bit about that process and you know what do you think was crucial in you getting as far as you have? Yeah, so I'd say, you know, uh, it's it's been a journey, right? In the early stages of my career, I would very much was uh, about let my work speak for itself. I, I didn't advocate um, as much um, for, for, hey, I, I can do this or I look at what I did, right? And so this led me kind of uh, to gloss over um, some of the things that I'd done. I'd never, um, and then I never really understood the value of really presenting that that view of my my accomplishment until I became a manager, right? And as a manager, it was my job to represent my my people, right? And so I was I was sort of polling them saying, hey, what have you done in the last quarter? What's what's notable and organizing all of that. And so that's when I really realized, hey, my manager is doing the same thing for me, right? That's when the light bulb really went off. And so that's when I was like, well, let me talk about my achievements and my goals in a sort of a data-driven way so that when I'm not in the room, um, you know, there's somebody who knows what I'm what I'm capable of, um, and 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 can and can be my advocate on it, right? So I think that's that's kind of one of it. It's like you it, you know not we all have our own personalities. I don't I don't know how to humble brag, but I know data and I know how to talk about the things that uh, that we can measure in terms of achievement based on that. And you know this was this was a way for me to sort of uh, you know feel comfortable with it. And then the other thing I would say is like. Build your own board of directors, right? So think about these people uh, who are not, you, who you don't report to, but they are in these conversations and these meetings and they're senior business leaders who can also advocate for you, right? So they can say, no, this new thing, I'm absolutely sure Paula May can do it, right? Um, even though she hasn't done something like this in her past, she has the skills. And just being able to do that, I think that's, uh, that's super useful. That's really kind of how I got this particular gig, right? Um, I was not in the room when... 
um, I guess our exec team was sort of discussing, you know, who would be right for for this GM of, of uh, Credit Karma Money role. And one of them who I happen to, to sort of meet on a regular basis said, hey, Paul and me can totally do it. Uh, and I don't know that if I ha- hadn't had that connection that I would have been considered for it, right? Not because I don't deserve it, but just because other people might not have known I was interested, right? So I, I know we have a long way to go on this, uh, but I think it just starts with that, like recognizing that you need to sort of do a little bit of this, here's what I've done, you know, finding your board of directors. And then really, you know, when I look at my team, I try to hire um, from a diverse perspective. So I, I think cognitive diversity is really, really important when you build products like mine, because we're trying to represent America, right? We're trying to represent a consumer that is across all sorts of age band and income band and location and, and ethnicity and all of that. So it's important to have that reflected in my team so that we build the right things for the right people, right? No, I think that's super interesting. I love thinking of it as like a board of directors thing too, because I mean, one of my questions was going to be like, do you have any mentors and whatnot? And sort of thinking of that as a board of directors versus a mentor is a really interesting way to to describe yeah. it. Yeah. And, you know, I think part of it is just like a board of directors. I have friends who know me, both in sort of a social setting as well as a professional setting. And they may not work for, with me in the same company, but they're like, I know your personality. I know what you like. I know what you're capable of. You know, this is this is what you should be really thinking about. So having that like objectivity from somebody who cares about you and knows you, I think that helps as well. Well, who is on your board of directors then, <laughs> if you don't mind naming a few folks? <laughs> uh, I don't think I want to sort of like name them here, but it's one. It is, one of them is a friend of mine who I have interned with since my um, since since my undergrad, um, and she's she's also in tech, but is in a in a very different uh, sort of area and field. Um, she's the one I, I rely on. I t- talked about um, sort of a couple of execs in our company right now who um, who also, um, uh, you know, are uh, I, I have a sort of a touch point with. I would say Ken, who's who's one of my, uh, who, uh, you know, I worked for in the last four and a half years, is, is also an amazing sounding board on some of this stuff as well. How did your previous position at Credit Karma set you up well for what you're doing today with Credit Karma Money? Uh well, one I think is like I mentioned, um, you know, I'm I'm a known quantity, right? People know what I'm capable of, so that's that's always an advantage. I think the other thing was, you know, I grew up in Karakama's um, sort of data systems, right? So I built the recommendations team, um, you know, worked on Lightbox, um, and so they, um, you know, and this is the the things that we're doing around autonomous finance and giving you insights and telling you what actions you should take. Those are very analytical and data-driven, even though it's a consumer product, right? So I think I feel like I, I bring that balance into it. I know having sort of great um, uh, consumer-experienced uh, PMs on my team and and, uh, and and domain experts, but then really sort of bringing the, how do we do this using the power of, of data dope that we know Credit Karma has. If people want to learn more about uh, Credit Karma Money or get in touch with you, what's the best way for them to reach out and find Yeah, out? so if you want to um, sign up, go to www.creditkarma.com slash checking or download the app from any of the app stores. Um, and you can reach me on Twitter at pd at ck. Awesome. And if you want to find out more about everything going on in fintech, check out fintechtoday.co as well as obviously this Tux Time podcast. Otherwise, thank you, Paula. It was great having you on today. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity.